Game of the year. Huge budget, AAA titles, all of them. Well, they do actually nominate like the most obvious indie game every year. And this one time it did win. But for the most part, huge AAA titles. And most of those are story-driven action games. Now look, there's nothing inherently wrong with this. In fact, we're actually like pretty big fans of most of the past Game of the Year recipients, but we just like to see a little bit more diversity in the awards, you know? And that's where this bad boy comes in. Socto Path Traveler 2. And it is freaking awesome. We've been playing this absolute gem of a game in pretty much all of our spare time since its release, and we think it deserves a Game of the Year nomination. At the very least, it deserves to win RPG of the Year, but let us tell you why. Let us make a case for the underdog. Speaking of underdogs, if you'd be so kind as to like this video, and maybe even subscribe to our channel, then perhaps we could become the overdogs. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that was bad. Okay, so firstly, do we think Octopath 2 is actually going to win Game of the Year? Hell nah. And honestly, we're not even sure that we want it to. Tears of the Kingdom and Final Fantasy 16 are both coming out later this year, and we've already had the fantasticness, it's a new word, copyright it, the fantasticness that is Hogwarts Legacy. But we just want Octopath to be acknowledged. You know, like this game can easily hold a candle to any of the previous nominees and it deserves some accolades, man, because it is just so freaking incredible. So I guess we should probably talk about Octopath Traveler 2 a little bit first and just explain a little bit why we think, in Tom's words, it's freaking incredible. So, um, mini review time. The first thing anyone is going to notice about this game is how beautiful it looks. Honestly, the rest of the game could just literally be a steaming pile of trash and we would still rate it because we just adore pixel art in general. Team Asano has actually said that this is like HD 2D 2.0. They've really gone to every length they can to get the most out of this engine and its art style. It actually looks like they've meticulously placed every single individual pixel. Nothing is out of place. Everything is where it's supposed to be, and the final product is amazing. The art style is actually a big reason why we feel this game could give the Game Awards some diversity. Even the indie nominee last year, Stray, had some pretty realistic set pieces. Anyone who actually has a cat would know that they absolutely nailed the mannerisms of that little kitty. HD2D is a pretty unique way of doing things, so to be recognised for that would be incredible. Asano has put a lot of work in here to get the game and the engine looking as good as possible. While we're on the subject of creative decisions, let's talk a little bit about the music. If you've seen any of our other videos, you may or may not know that I'm something of a music buff myself. And well, Octopath 2 soundtrack is here to chew bubblegum and kick some ass. And let me tell you that it is all out of bubblegum. <laughs> Let's take the first track you hear as an example. The main menu theme. It is oh so similar to the main theme from the first Octopath title, but at the same time, it's so different. There's so many new elements and it just feels enhanced, if that makes sense. So it gives you this feeling of familiar comfort if you've played the first game, but it also screams that this is a brand new adventure, bigger and better than ever. It's just so well done. And that's just the first song. I obviously don't have time to play you the entire soundtrack here in this video, but I implore you to go straight from this video into a video of the soundtrack because it's just so good. Like you won't regret it, I promise. 
Yasunori Nishiki is the composer here, who you might know from some of their other goated soundtracks, you know, like Kingdom Hearts 3 or the Final Fantasy 7 remake. We know we're kind of kidding ourselves with this video and Octopath 2 probably won't get nominated for Game of the Year. But man, if it doesn't at least get nominated for Best Soundtrack, then I am going to riot. I'm gonna buy a pitchfork, I'm gonna set some things on fire, break a few windows, the whole, the whole thing, the whole kit and caboodle. I thought I'd let Tom go on his little music tangent because he's pretty passionate about it, if you couldn't tell. It was the breaking windows too far. The rioting. The rioting in general. Maybe. But okay. I mean, I guess it wouldn't be that threatening because it would, like, maybe it would just be you running around. <laughs> Man, if anyone wants to riot with me, please let me know in the comments. Riot on. Do you think that we could get, like, in trouble for... Instigating a riot? Yeah. Yes. We're not rioting. We're just joking. Just to, just to cover our legal butts. It's not, it's not going to happen. <laughs> no, we're joking. Oh, Laura, we messed up here. <laughs> I'm real sorry. I did. I took it too far. I'm going to tell you about the story now, though. Not too much, obviously, because I don't want to spoil it for you, but Octopath once again sets itself apart by the way it delivers its narrative. In a traditional RPG, you'll build your party in a linear way, and then the stories of all the characters intertwine and build on each other. You'll find none of that here, though. Octopath's eight different characters all have their own semi-self-contained stories, giving the player so much freedom in where they want to explore and what story they want to hear next. You could just completely ignore some of the protagonists if you wanted to. Yeah, the first one actually got some flack for this. People felt like it was too disjointed and there wasn't enough party interaction. So Square put in a whole bunch of story scenarios that involve multiple party members this time. So those RPG traditionalists have nothing to complain about. We never had an issue with how Octopath told its story, but eh, the more narrative, the better. So we welcome these new things. A whole kind of point here is that Octopath 2 is doing things differently from your mainstream video games. And therefore it deserves to be a wild card in the game of the year nominees. And that includes how it tells its story or rather stories. Variety is the spice of life, so they say. You're just going to have to trust us though when we say that the narratives are incredible because we want you to actually play the game and we don't want to just tell you all the stories. Dude, like even the seemingly most boring story, like this one character just wants to be like a star. I'm just like, oh, this is really lame. Why did I get this character like third? And then by the second chapter, I like cried, man. Like, it does not stay boring for very long. I mean, given that it was mostly because of the soundtrack, but still, it gets a lot better. We should also talk about the gameplay, especially because the internet has been on fire recently about Final Fantasy 16 not being turn-based combat. Honestly, we're not really sure why that's a big deal because didn't they start straying away from that in like number 11? But anyway, if you do want a more traditional turn-based gameplay, then look no further than Octopath 2. 100% buy this game, we promise that it will be for you. It's also super rewarding building your team in certain ways to take down particular bosses. We love all that nerdy stuff, like I better give this person the good armor because it'll give her more magical defense and she's kind of flimsy, but then this other person can have this weapon because she needs the extra SP. You know, all that satisfying RPG stuff. The exploration is also heaps of fun here. Finding all the nooks and crannies in this beautiful world yields you heaps of great rewards, even though most of the time the scenery is reward enough itself. Is that a bit cliche? I don't care because it's true. <laughs> it's just that good to look at. <laughs> just like you. Ah, uh, cliche. <laughs> <laughs> There's also a whole bunch of special moves each character can use in and out of battle that make everything just a little bit more interesting. Being able to rob like 90% of NPCs blind is my personal favourite, but maybe you're more of a forcing people to fight your legions of beasts kind of person. Each to their own. Messing with NPCs and having abilities outside of battle isn't exactly a new concept, but man does Octopath do it well. It'll probably do it better than any other game this year as well. Hint hint, nudge nudge, game awards. 
So hopefully through all of that, we managed to get our point across that Octopath Traveler 2 is just a really fun game. When this video was first conceptualized, it had like an 88 Metacritic score, which is probably high enough to be considered for game of the year. But now it's sitting on like an 83 or something. So thanks to that one guy that gave it like a 70 and dropped its score down. And you know what? It's probably going to be different again by the time this video comes out. Yay. It will be. Yeah, it will be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, we still wanted to make this video because I especially adore this series. And I think it just deserves more praise. Like not enough people are talking about the Octopath series. And it also lends itself to the point that the Game Awards and many other Game Awards are always skewed towards those high budget AAA action games from massive studios. Octopath isn't that but it is filled with all of the love and polish that makes those other games contenders. It would just be such a fun curveball to throw in the mix. Is this all just wishful thinking on our part? Honestly, yes. But it's fun to dream though, right? Maybe we'll do our own some kind of game awards at the end of the year, and it can be a contender for game of the year in that one. We should actually do that. Yeah, it's actually not a bad idea, yeah. right? <laughs> Thanks. I think you mentioned it before, Tom, but there are a number of other Game Award categories that we do expect to see Octopath at least get nominated for, if not win. Music was the first one that we mentioned, but the most obvious one is the best RPG, and then it should also be a contender in the best narrative and in the best art direction. This game just deserves to win something. Octopath Traveler is one of the best games on the Switch, and number two is all that and way more. It's just pure, simple fun. And it is an easy recommend to just about anyone. Be prepared to see it pop up on the channel again, because you betcha, if there's an excuse for me to talk about it, I'ma talk about it. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching everyone. Octopath Traveler 2 for Game of the Year, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Woo!